Hello and welcome to BA Brew. I'm Mike. I'm Jamie. And I'm Debbie. And today we're talking about the BA Service Framework and we're joined by Jamie Toyne, who's Head of Business Analysis at the Ministry of Justice. Um, thank you for joining us, Jamie. Just before we sort of get going and talking about this, it'd be really useful um, to, to get at a little bit of background around the BA Service Framework, Debbie, and see if we can do that in a, in a nice, slightly shorter version than, than the book. You'd care to uh, introduce us that. I'll try. Um, OK, the BA Service Framework. I started looking into the role of the business analyst, which is a whole subject on its own. And so many people said, how do you define it? What is it? It was so ambiguous. And around by the same time as I was researching this, I started looking at the service mindset, um, which is based on research called service science. And this really was light bulb moments. And I thought, well, if we could put the service mindset into our view of business analysis, what would it look like? And then researched talking to lots of very experienced BAs. I think I calculated it was over 300 years of experience. And out of that research formed this framework that defines six core services that business analysis and business analysts, if that's the job title, offer. And that really is where it all started. And um, it's been absolutely great to hear that people have run with it because that was always the intention. It's not set in stone. It's just here's this as a framework. Now up to you to run with it. And it's lovely to know that that's what Jamie's done. So, Jamie, tell us what you've been doing. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, I think I think for me that the BA service framework has uh, piqued my interest uh, after reading um, Debbie and, and, and Tina's publication um, from, from BCS in terms of delivering business analysis and the BA service um, uh, framework in there. And, and for me, it's something which is really valuable for establishing a common sort of view of what business analysts do in organisations or, or people with that title and, um, and, and, and that as a profession more widely. And I think um, coming into Ministry of Justice a few months ago, it was clear we've got a really um, a really large uh, BA practice, um, 50 uh, or just over 50 members across Ministry of Justice, all working on really, really different things. Um, all with different experiences, um, all with um, differing um, sort of um, flavours of business analysis in some cases in terms of what they were working on. Um, so the BA service felt like a really good um, thing that we need to define pretty quickly um, so we could look at what we're doing, what what maybe do we need to carry, what do we maybe need to look at refining and what maybe um, do we need to look at um, establishing sort of a language to articulate what we do so we can promote what we do um across the organization better right so so what what triggered it really what what started the uh, the balls the ball rolling on it um i think like i say some of that is really around i think the organization's got 50 or so um or just over 50 business analysts um huge um huge amounts of experience working within government working with ministry of justice working in particular areas of you know a business analysis in Ministry of Justice, um, but also a lot of experience from outside of MOJ too. And there's not, you know, there wasn't um, that sort of common language, that common um, sort of framework to articulate what business analysis is. Um, and the BA service and the BA service framework are like a really good starting point to start to look at that. That's, that's just brilliant, Jamie, because I think, we kept trying to say, didn't we, well, what's the role of the BA? And I always used to say, if you want to set up a one-day meeting, just put a group of BAs in a room, say, what's the role of the BA, and walk away again, because that was the agenda, you know, <laughs> because there was there's such a diverse range of services, if you like, that are offered. Um, but what I wanted was organisations to actually look at business analysis as a service and, and also sort of say, OK, there are a variety of services, but it's still within this discipline, this profession that we refer to as business analysis. And it, it's still got that objective of helping organisations to develop, grow and succeed if you see what I mean. Um, so it's really great that you you used it and, and adapted it, which, as I said earlier, was, was what I wanted. 
Yeah, th- thanks, Abby. I think, you know, you're absolutely right in terms of it being something that's a really good basis that you can actually take and, and tailor to, to your own organisation. I think um, I think for us, it was very, very important that we use that um, to establish that thinking, more, more so even, you know, actually some of the, the you know, the services yeah. themselves, because I think it was a different way of thinking for many. Um, and it, it's a really helpful way to, to sort, sort of get into thinking about what we do as, as, as services that deliver value rather than maybe focusing on particular techniques. So rather than delivering technique X or technique Y, we're actually delivering something which ultimately should make our digital services that we build and you know design build and deliver better for our users and that's 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 the sort of the, the, the link i think it was really important to start to make um and um for us we also wanted to make sure that ba service definition was something that could be consumed by business analysts and non-business analysts alike and i think that was really important for us yeah and that's that again was something that i was really keen to happen because Quite often when we talk about business analysis, we all understand the terminology. We know what we're talking about. And we have these discussions where I sometimes think anybody from another um, part of the world of change, let alone business, listening to this or or government, um, they might not know what we're on about, basically, because everybody talks in, in our shorthand and with techniques and that. And what I wanted to do was say, if we look at it as a service, how does it look from our customer's perspective? What sort of words, descriptions, definitions make sense to them? And and that's back to what you were saying about it's a mindset, isn't it? You know, Um, I mean, Mike, you've worked in lots of different organizations and I'm sure you've come across, you know, instances where we talk business analysis and not everybody knows what we're on about yeah you talk you talk start talking techniques and people kind of glaze over and you think well I, the whole point is not the technique it's what we're trying to get to it's we use this technique to get to some end point um and actually when you start talking about well this is how this is where we're going with this don't worry about what we're doing with the technique that's a mean to means to an end we're trying to deliver some or offer some kind of benefit out of this which could be an understanding of the problems of the current system it could be an understanding of different stakeholders perspectives or a whole range of different things just to name drop a couple of things that we do um and that is a challenge actually trying to step away from naming the techniques and say well we're doing this exercise so that we can learn this particular thing. Did, did you have any um, particular challenges with that, Jamie? Were that, how did you get on with the different, because you've got quite a lot of different stakeholders in any organisation that um, engage with business analysis? Yeah, I think um, one of the things we, we actually did was establish a, a sort of representative working group to look at our defining our BA service. And I think um, the first few sessions really around that were, trying to promote service thinking and, and also to try and um, try and think of a really easy way of trying to describe what we do that didn't naturally go into the world of techniques. And, and it sounds it sounds like a really easy thing to do on, on, on the face of it, but I think practically um, actually getting a group of people together who are really passionate about what they do, are really experienced in what mm-hmm. they do. Um, sometimes it can be, um, a, you know, good conversations can go down the path of talking about some really interesting um you know areas of techniques or and tools but actually then that can make it quite hard to then bring it back up to a service level um view and i think um it, it's it's one of those things i think when you read um and and, and digest what service thinking is about i think it's quite easy to grasp it but when you try and apply it um i think that's when where it takes some refinement and some back and forth uh, to get there mm. um, and not just actually establishing and defining our service, but as we start to roll it out, we're also seeing some of the first questions often back are, okay, but how then how then do we deliver this service? And go, well, that's the next stage. The first bit is the what. And um, so yeah, that, that's that's a that's a common question we're getting at the moment. Yeah. It's it's interesting, isn't it? Because people do have to get their head around mindset. You're absolutely right. And and understanding that it's a different way of looking at things. And we've had we've had years and years and years where there's been a lot of focus on delivery of product. And in the business change world, we who don't, you know, we aren't at the sharp end of product, we talk about 
delivering deliverables. Do you know what I mean? And there's been this sort of an assumption that just by that delivery, there's the value. And the service mindset is so different to that because it actually questions, well, where's value coming from? Mm -hmm. What do the customers and the other stakeholders see as value? And so actually getting people to understand that, it is a bit of a shift, particularly because we've had so much of a product mindset for so long that is so focused on delivery of product rather than understanding, well, what service does that offer? And once we start understanding what service things offer, you can really see where business analysis fits into that because of the service, but but it is a shift. And, and I'm sure that has been quite a challenge, you know, for you to actually make sure is embedded. Yeah, it has. And I think um I think now if we had if we had the rest of the group on um who've been working with uh, to define this, I think we've we've got quite a good narrative now and how we explain it. Um, but that's taken some time to build up because it's narrative that works both for a particular audience, but also you know, a particular audience within, within one organization. I think it's trying to find ways you can you can land that in, in, in a way which helps people contextualize it more clearly. And um and with as we roll this out to our community and as we look to roll it out to um other professions that we collaborate with, to stakeholders, to people who are commissioning business analysis um activities, um, we are trying to think about all the time how how can we actually move this away from maybe things that maybe people might be familiar with in terms of techniques, even if they're not in the business analyst profession. And as you rightly say, uh, they'll be bringing it back onto what is the value we're doing here. And, um, and, and actually one of the ways you're starting to do that is to, in a nutshell, what is the service? So we, we really focus on that initially in our, in our own service definition. Um, but then we have a more detailed description of what that really is. Uh, but then the, the, the third point we have in our in our BSO is definitely is what is the value is what value is this bringing it into who, and and that's a really really important part. And actually, that's the part that's probably taking the longest time to define in many ways um, because it's trying to find a way which is accessible to people who are experienced practitioners in business analysis, so they can go, okay, when you say that, you're really meaning this and this. Uh, but also using the same language and to articulate that to non-business analyst professionals who are going, oh, so this will help me or this will help the organisation or help our users to do to do that. And it's it, it's 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 been a real it's been a real challenge at times. It's not it's not been easy. But I think what we've got and learned so far is is enabled us um, to carry on defining each service as we go along. So we've, we've approached this in an individual, well, we've, we've looked at what we wanted to include in our overall BA service, but then we've approached this quite iteratively in, in terms of defining each one. So we've defined each, you know, sub-service or service that makes up our overall BA service um, one at a time and then sent out for feedback to our community um, to make sure every pitch is in the right way. Is it, is it, is it, um, is it clear to understand what this means? And at the same time, shared it with some friendly non-BAs um, to go, okay, by reading this, can you understand what we're, what we're, we're offering ultimately? You know, does this make sense? And, and, and can you see how that delivers value to you? And um, it's been a wordsmithing, the art of wordsmithing as, as much as the science of, of service uh, definition and that combination together um, is, is, has been challenging but rewarding at the same time. It's, I mean, it sounds like you've had or, or there have been some light bulb moments, which I think it's that's really quite um, quite encouraging and rewarding in itself. When people start to realise, oh, that's that's how that helps me. So the business partners who realise that, but also when you get some BAs who who then realise what they're doing isn't just for the developer or whatever, it's actually to some end point. So kind of getting away from this sort of silent mentality, which I've had in a few jobs, probably probably quite a few years ago, but this this idea, well, I always do a process model because that's what the next person in line needs, not because that helps the business partner at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's getting those light bulb moments is 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 quite uh, quite good. So, yeah, what other light bulb moments have you have you had on that on that journey? Um, I think well, first off, I think the one you just mentioned, Mike, is a really valid point, and we, we've had this particularly some. People have been newer into the profession. Um, some of the some of the first sort of comments back were, "Oh, well, I understand now. I'm now looking at through this lens that actually um, that actually it's not just delivering something to you know to, to the design team or to, to, to the dev team. Um, this is ultimately going to result in a better 
um, thing for our users and, 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 and for our stakeholders. And um, so I think it certainly helps to cement some of that um, with, 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 with what we've ever won, but I think we've particularly seen that with people who are probably quite new into business analysis. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is actually when you go, uh, well, depending on what path you take, particularly if you take quite an instructive path to, to, to learning, um, sometimes you can go straight into learning about the techniques, but actually really what we should, probably should all be doing is learning about the services first, and then we can delve into techniques after. Um, yeah. I, I think to, to your question though, um, like I think in terms of other, other light bulb moments we've had, I think um, one of the biggest things is actually, it's been, it's been surfacing some of the stuff that, um, some of the differences really in terms of what we offer to different parts of the organization, which probably isn't a huge surprise. Um, but having a having a structure to talk about that really does tease out more things than just having a general big open question of, okay, what does everyone do um, in their team? What does everyone offer in their team? And obviously you can get some you know really minute sort of responses or really big responses, but you never really have a structure to, to center it on. Um, so that's been one of the, 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 the big light bulb moments as much as a, a fact finding um, sort of um, activity as well. And, and as teased, that's one of the things we want to do. Um, I think the other thing is um, that it's really, it's really, you know, uh, sh showed to us as, as, as a group and as, and as a community is actually there are some things actually maybe we shouldn't be doing um, as well. And I think, um, I think, you know, we all want to be T-shaped individuals and we all want to, to you know, to, to be helpful and, and, and good with corporate citizens and, and do the right thing for our, you know, for our users. But in some cases, some of the things have actually have been taking our time away from the things we can add more value in, you know, where our skills better suit and um that's not always been um you know the, the easiest sort of conversation to, to to get into and and we're still having some of those but actually it allows us then to offer the full service spectrum rather than just one or two bits plus some of the other bits which would probably you know could be probably what well, probably could be better delivered by other professions who've got you know the, the more specialist um skills within them so it's not always just been about deciding and, and defining the what it is we do but it's also been actually defining and, and learning about what maybe we shouldn't offer as, as, as a as a standard service day to day. Yeah, that's really interesting, Jamie, because I think when I started looking at this and and really felt that this offers us a lens, it was so many light bulb moments for me. It, it was just incredible. And then you can go in so many different directions with it. And what that does is it helps in so many ways, and one of the ways that I think really came to the fore for me was also that idea that people working as business analysts or working with other job titles, but but doing business analysis, because you know there is a, there are various things going on in, in those sorts of areas, but they could look at the services in a service framework and they could identify, well, okay, that's an area maybe that I'm, I've got expertise in, or maybe I'm interested in, what do the skills, the T-shape, if you like, for that particular service look like? But it, it also gave a basis for people saying, you know, I think I would do well in that particular area of service. So there's a career progression mm -hmm. and potential with the service framework too. And so all of those different things can come together and also the thing that I really like is the service mindset does look at the why, you know, what is the value that we're proposing here? OK, so what is this service? And obviously those two are very intertwined. But then when you get into the how, because you're defining it at a service level, you, there's a there's an ability to flex and adapt to context in there. And mm -hmm. so you can build your T-shape and, and you could be absolutely fantastic, maybe a business process improvement or something. But within that, there's all sorts of different things that you might know about and gain uh, experience in, but you're not going to apply them all in one context um, because you have to be able to be adaptable. And that's the other level of it that I think taking that how view within the context of the service view allows you to have that adaptability too, as well as having that career progression. So that was always, again, my intention was that people would would run into those routes as well and see other applications. It's interesting you, you raised the point about prioritization as well there, Jamie, because actually as BAEs, we can help in lots of different ways. And, and I do remember at uh, one job, well, probably not just one job, um, but I remember one manager saying, saying, oh, you're too helpful. And it's like, well, OK, I want to be helpful. That's that, that's a good thing. That sounds like positive feedback to me. But I think the point they were trying to make was actually 
you can be more helpful in certain certain areas than other areas. So um, lots of BAs tend to fill the gaps that they find in any kind of change project they're in. And actually, if you don't think about the gaps you're filling, you may not be doing the best thing. So that prioritization piece, I think, is really powerful and really important. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Mike. And I think the it, it, one, of, one of the things that, um, that, that we've seen um, from that is actually, um, you know, ultimately, we, we, we are, you're right, we're all very, very helpful people. Um, but I think that's sometimes confused our identity around what, what it is as a profession we offer. And, yeah. and even though it's maybe been helpful in the context of that particular thing, in terms of an identity as a profession, it's probably sometimes muddied, you know, muddied the water, made it more confusing to people, you know, to, to, to your point. So, um, and I think this is where you know, the BA service framework as a whole and, and, and you know, a, a BA service for a particular organization really helps to, to crystallize that. And I think one of the, one of the, um, one, one, of, uh, one, of, one of the members of the group um, it, who's been looking at the BA service framework and the BA service uh, in, in, in the context of MOJ um, has described the BA service definition as putting our stall out. And it's exactly that, this is, that's, that's really what it is. It's putting, putting our stall out and saying this is what we're going to offer this is what we're going to sell to, uh, to the organization and bringing it back into that that, that that value based sort of thinking um and if we can't put it on a stall and sell it um to take the analogy a little further then actually why should we you know be really making a big song and dance about you know spending time or, or, or even talking about it obviously there's some some nuances there that you need to be careful with but i think as a, as a principle it's, it's a helpful one that's a really really good way of putting it because I think as well, setting our stall out also says to me the things we can do where we have this knowledge and experience and expertise and skill and all that sort of stuff. Because when I was doing this research, um, a senior business analyst commented to me, the problem with business analysis is everybody thinks they can wear the badge. And that was a real eye opening because I thought, yes, absolutely. But actually, to do these services, to offer them and do them well, it takes skill and knowledge and, and techniques and expertise and all those sorts of things. So the other part of it for me is celebrating really good professional business analysis because too often there's been a sense of anybody can do it and that's not correct. Yeah, no, it's, 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 a, it's, a, really, it's, a, really, it's a really important point, I think, isn't it, to, to, to ponder on actually, because I think, the, one of the goals we had when we were you know, introducing or wanting to introduce our BA service framework, well, our BA service and then using the BA service framework as that, as that basis was to improve our identity, but also improve the BA services we offer. And both of those were two of the, two of the main goals. And um, actually using this as a bit of a springboard to do more proactive PR on, on good stuff we've done. Um, and we've, we've, we've not quite got there yet, but I think, for me, that's something. That's a direction I'd like to take this in, and, and we can, you know, rather than maybe focusing or, or, or leaning on the technique, which has got quite a limited audience when you're articulating it, talking about the value that's held and in a real life example um, is, is really powerful. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really good because actually we're not we're not big at um, celebrating what we've what we've achieved, are we? We're, we're quite sort of uh, fade away into the background and maybe. Some of that actually enables us to have a chance to say, look at look how well this turned out and, and sell that service. Yeah, it sounds it's I'm sure we could talk for, for a considerable amount of time about this. And I'd, I'd like to say thank you, Jamie, for sort of coming on and joining us on BA Brew today. So thank you to everybody who's joined us today for the episode of BA Brew. If you do have any ideas for future episodes of BA Brew, then please email us at babrew at assistkd.com. Thanks a lot.